Oh, and that's a brilliant effort. And they've turned it right around. In the space of a few minutes, Saudi Arabia grabs control of the game. Welcome to episode 9 of Dowry, the Saudi football podcast, where we look at all the latest news and results from what is becoming one of the most intriguing stories and leagues around the world. Of course, it is the Saudi Pro League. I'm Peter Redding, and with me, as always, is our Arab News Sports Editor, Ali Khaled. And we will also have our reporter, Khaled al Arafa giving his latest dispatch from Riyadh, as he does most weeks. But first, Ali, massive, massive news for Arab and Saudi football this week. Hi, Pete. Good to be back indeed. And a huge news. First of all, uh, the 2030 World Cup has been awarded to Spain, Portugal and Morocco. Uh, first time that three countries of RB, uh, will be uh, hosting it. This is absolutely fantastic news for Morocco, who mm. if, uh, everyone remembers how brilliant they were at, uh, at the last World Cup in Qatar, reaching the semifinals. Easily the best Arab performance of all time. So this is fantastic news in itself. But, you know, even, you know, like for Saudi Arabia, even bigger news uh, on the same day that Saudi Arabia are officially bidding for the 2034 World Cup, you know, like as you remember, you know, there's been a lot of talk about it, but this is it's now confirmed, you know, the leadership of uh, the football leadership, the country's leadership have confirmed Saudi Arabia are going for the 2034 World Cup. This is massive. I mean, this is some of, one of the biggest news in, in Saudi football for a long time. I think they've got a really good chance of getting it because, you know, the next World Cup is in the US and Canada. You know, after that, we'll have Spain, Portugal, Morocco, obviously, like, you know, so Europe will, will uh, Europe and Africa will be getting uh, a look in. So, you know, so by 2034, you know, it may be time to bring it back to Asia. And, and mm. also, you know, like Saudi Arabia will be hosting the 2027 AFC Asian Cup, you know, in, again, a massive tournament. And they can show really what, uh, you know, you know, how capable they are of holding the tournament, the stadiums, the football culture and all that. Um, I think this is fantastic news and we all look forward to it. I think Saudi Arabia have a really good chance now of taking the 2034 World Cup. And how brilliant would that be? Fantastic news indeed, AK. Listen, on to the last week. Uh, no major so- shocks in the Saudi Pro League. Uh, games went pretty much as we expected, with one exception. Yeah. Uh, hi, Peter. Good to be back. Uh, yeah, we thought, you know, we, we did say that the big clubs will have it their own way. And that mostly happened. Al Nasser continued to climb up the table uh, with a 2-1 win over Altai. Cristiano Ronaldo, who else, scored the winner from the spot with just a few minutes left. I think it was in the 87th minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, know, you know, after losing their opening two matches, uh, we thought they were in crisis. You know, it's now six wins on the, on the trot for uh, yeah. uh, Louis, Louis Castro's team. Uh, you know they're suddenly in fourth uh, in fourth place, but not it's, it's not just being fourth. They're, they're only two points behind the leaders. Uh, some comeback, you know, um, very impressive stuff uh, by a, an exciting team. You know they are, they they're playing some wonderful stuff at the moment. Uh, you know you you mentioned a slight a slight upset. I would call it a slight upset, not a major uh, shock. Uh, but last week's leaders and reigning champions, uh, it had dropped uh, points in a nil nil draw with Faiha. Uh, on yeah. Friday, uh, you know, honestly, not like I, like I said, not a major shock or a disaster, but it did cost them the lead. Um, and uh, our man in Riyadh, Khalid Rafa, was there at the match. Hi, Ali. Hi, Peter. How are you guys? Let me tell you about the past week here in Saudi Arabia. A lot of matches uh, were happening. Uh, it was the beginning of the Saudi Kings Cup, the Asian Champions League, and uh, the Saudi League, Russian League as well. For me, I was covering Al Fayhal Ittihad game. The game uh, ended 0 0. Not a lot of chances. Most of the time, the ball was in the middle. It was okay. It was a good match from Al Fayhal side, but it wasn't from Al Ittihad. Uh, even though we saw uh, Hamdallah came back, Coronado came back, but still Benzema wasn't ready in that match. After the match, I uh, interviewed uh, Fabinho, the Brazilian player from Al Ittihad. I asked him about the result. If they were satisfied or not, he said, unfortunately, we didn't put our rhythm in the game. Uh, We didn't create a lot of uh, chances. Uh, We need to focus more. And uh, he was complaining that the goalkeeper for Al-Fayha, Vladimir, was holding the ball uh, too much. He was uh, falling down a lot. And uh, Al-Fayha player, they were counting on the counterattack. 
So most likely it wasn't where they wanted it at the end. And he said, we are playing a lot of matches right now, matches every three days. So all the players uh, in the squad uh, needs to participate. And this is what the coach is doing. I spoke uh, to Henry, the Feha player, after the match as well. I asked him about the result. He said, uh, we did a great j a game. Uh, draw for us is okay, better than losing the points. And we will do much better in the next matches. Both teams uh, had matches as well, Ali, in the Asian Champions League. We're going to see what's going to happen. And then uh, we'll get back to you in the next round. Back to you, Ali. So, so this draw, um, they, they dropped points. At, you know, it, it gave Al-Hilal the chance to get back to the top of the table. And they took that chance uh, that same night, uh, later, later on that night, with a 2-0 um, win over Al-Shabaab in the Riyadh derby. Neymar scoring neither of those two goals. You know, we keep waiting. I, I, knew, I knew you were going to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 please, can... please note that it's you mentioning it and not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it, it, things would get better for him, though, later on the week. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, they now lead the table, uh, Al Hilal. Look, they are, there are many people. You know, we keep saying this about Al Hilal. It doesn't matter like, if their form dips and all that. They're, they're like a winning machine. You know, they're, they're, mm. the culture of winning at that club is incredible. You know, and they have, they were, you know, only. A year and a bit ago, they were uh, Asian and Saudi champions. Yes, it had took their title. They will be very hurt. They'll be wanting to come back. And now that they've got their noses in front, you know, we'll wait and see. You know, it's been a while since they've like you know stretched the lead over over the rest. This week, we're taking a slight break from the SPL clubs as we welcome our next guest, former Liverpool star and legend, of course, Robbie Fowler, uh, now coach of Al Qadisia. Hi, Robbie. How are you? How are you, Pete? You okay? Yeah, very well. Thanks, very well. Going to pass you straight on, Ali. We've got so many questions, but uh, first and foremost, it's great to have you here, uh, and it's going very well. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm doing okay. You know, I'm not getting carried away. I know it's a very, very early days, but we're, we're past the first quarter of the season now, which um, I think, certainly from my own point of view, I think much better than what we uh, we envisaged and expected. So, uh, yeah, long may that continue. Robbie, uh, I mean, you just mentioned that it's it's gone really well the start. You know, what's it what's it been like? You know, in general, just being in Saudi, obviously taking over at Katsia and uh, you know, new you know settings, new culture, new surroundings. How have you settled? How have you settled in? Well, you know what I've looked at. Uh, I mean, I've been one of them. So um, I've obviously been footballer, you know, all my life basically. Um, and I know that you've got to travel. I know that you've got to experience new places and, and do new things. And, you know, I've, I've shown in the past that, you know, I'm comfortable doing that. And obviously when I got the chance to go over there and, and, you know, let's get away from the political side of what everyone thinks about Saudi. But, you know, I treat it the way, uh, you know, I want to go over there and see it myself. And, um, you know, I genuinely love the place. It, it's been it's been fantastic. It's not been an eye opener because, you know, I've, I forget the noise, what people say, you know, go over there and experience, experience it myself. Um, and I mean, the way I've been looked after, it's been, it's been incredible. Uh, and uh, look, you know, I'll, I'll take it for what I see it. And, you know, I've, I've massively enjoyed it. You know, I'm at a new club, essentially a new club who, you know, have, have yo-yoed up and down from the Pro League to League One. Uh, you know, for a number of years, I've had, you know, I think 50 managers in seven, seven years. Uh, so it tells you straight away that there needs to be some sort of uh, stability within that club. Uh, and I came over as um, um, uh, as just a bit of a consultant first. And then obviously once, once I knew that the, uh, the head coach role was available, I went, you know what, let me do it and I'll do it. And you know, I went through obviously the process of, um, you know, the... The, uh, the head coach role. I went through the um, uh, the interview process uh, and uh, you know, managed to get in. Uh, I've loved it, genuinely loved it. We went to Turkey pre-season co competition, a uh, pre-season tournament um, with uh, with probably two players who we've got now. So all the players that I have in my squad, I think only two of them actually went to Turkey uh, our, our pre-season camp. So um, you know, genuine, genuinely, it's been tough. It's been hard work. Uh, but look, you know, I know my role is to uh, to go make the club better, to go and try and develop some of the players that we've got. Uh, and thus far, it's been uh, it, it's been it, it's been a, a huge success. Robbie, you mentioned um, you mentioned obviously like that you're used to traveling, going to different places. You've you've managed in Australia, you've managed in India. You know, obviously, like this is a, a new experience, but. Uh... I mean, is it uh, is it good having a few more familiar faces around? I mean, have you had the chance to see your old mate uh, Stephen Gerrard yet? 
I've seen him once. To be honest, I've spoken to him a few times. I've seen him once, off because of the, our games have sort of um, have overlapped. So, uh, but you know, yeah, given the time, and you know, I'm sure that we'll sit down. We'll have a we'll we'll, we'll have a good chin wag over over a coffee, and uh, you know, maybe a game of golf. But uh, look, Stephen's a good friend of mine, obviously, um, and I'm sure I'll chew his ear off. He'll chew mine off. Um, but yeah, we're 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 good we're good friends, and you know, quite rightly so. We will catch up. You know, I'll I'll talk about our league. You know, we'll talk about his league, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. But unfortunately, we've not seen each other that much so far. Yeah, I mean, you know, speaking of the uh, Saudi Pro League, all the focus has been on all these major signings, the influx of players that have come in. Uh, obviously, the whole you know world is is looking at that. You know, I've I've heard you uh, you made a couple of comments to our newspaper uh, Arab News recently, and you said that you know you're obviously going to be focusing on working with the squad, just as you mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, and probably working. You know, you're going to have to focus on working with the local talent and the players that you you've been given. How have you seen the, sort of the local talent in terms of standards and in terms of like absorbing your ideas and, and your methods? Yeah, uh, look, I think it, it's football any part of the world that you go to. I think that there's different standards, there's different elements of how you can play. Um, I think there's different cultures. We all know that. But I think fundamentally what you've got to remember is, um, you know, the football and world, there's, there's, there's a culture for the football and world as well. So we need to get that across. So people need to understand sort of how I want to play, what I want to do. And of course, I need to understand the, the, the local the local culture, if you like, and um I'm all for that. Uh, I do know that. Uh, I mean, let's go back to where we are. I mean, our club has spent a little bit of money in terms of bringing some players in. Um, you know, that doesn't guarantee anything. It genuinely doesn't. I mean, you look at Chelsea's performance in the Premier League uh, the last couple of years, and they've spent nearly well, up to a billion pounds, which doesn't necessarily mean because you've spent that, that much money, you're going to be you know rolling around in championships. You've still got to go put the hard yards in. You've still got to work hard. You've still got to work with what you've got. Now, even the pro league teams, I know that they bring in uh, a an amount of foreign players in, and of course they're going to sort of develop the Saudi players as well. Uh, and you know that's exactly what we we plan and uh, we plan on doing with our you know local players. We have got you know a, a good a good influx of foreign players, but we all know that the you know the, the dream of the Saudi uh, football federation is to, to to grow that league to grow certainly our league uh, and develop the Saudi players so that they can get better in in future international competitions so yeah of course i'm all for that and um like like any club any part of the world if if you're a young player and you show that you've got the desire the correct desire the correct attitude and you've got the correct fundamentals of wanting to be uh, that top professional player then you know, I'm going to bounce on the back of your 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 ethos, if you like, and I'm going to work with you to try and develop you into becoming that superstar player that you want to be. So um, if you show me the attitude and the desire that, that I want, then uh, I'm, I'm going to work with you uh, and, and definitely improve you. And I think we've improved, certainly our Saudi players, from uh, certainly from my, you know, I'm not patting myself on the back here, but the, the, the professional standards that I've probably tried to instill into our players is 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 what I've been used to as an elite player, you know, playing in the top leagues, uh, playing in the top league in the Premier League for a number of years. You know, the coaches I've played under, uh, the managers I've played under, uh, and I'd like to think I've taken a little bit of everything that they've given me, uh, and I want to sort of try and get that into the players that I'm coaching now. Brilliant stuff, uh, Robbie. I mean, it, it, you know, you mentioned that, you, that you've improved the squad. It's been a great start to the season. I know you're obviously trying to keep your feet on the ground. You're not jumping at it. It's still early days, but unbeaten. You know, five wins, two draws. The, the last game was the one-one draw with Jabalain. You know, uh, yeah. you know, obviously a bit too early maybe for targets, but you know, very ambitious. You know, you're in, at an ambitious club, so surely you know, like you, you, at some point, you must be thinking right. Promotion is definitely on the cards here. You know. Yeah, look, I, I think, I mean, I, I wouldn't beat around the bush. I think sort of my owners sort of want to go up. Uh, and look, I'm, I'm a football a football man myself. You know, I want to be successful. I want to be the very, very best I can be. Uh, and we, we've got work to do. We know that. But, you know, we, we want to get promoted. Uh, and, you know, I've got no no bones about saying that, oh, let's, let's just develop and play on. Yeah. I want to get the right results. You know, I, I want to. I want to go up. I want to go in that pro league. You know, I want to manage in the in the top league. So, um, you know, why not put a bit of pressure on myself? Because you know, the pressure coming from you know 
you know, other parts of other parts of the world on me, uh, and I can deal with pressure. You know, I've had pressure for for, for years and years, as, as that elite player that I was saying. So, of course, yes, we want to get promoted. We've had a great start. I think we've got uh, 17 points out of a maximum 21. Um, and I think, as I said before, this, this obviously conversation started. You know, we're we're ahead of where we need to be currently. Um, are we playing unbelievable football? I think we're doing very, very well. You know, we don't really look like we've, we've been beat or needing or wanting to get beat. Uh, and uh, I think the fundamentals are, are in place for, for for what we need to do and where we need to go. And um, I'm happy with saying that we uh, we want to get promoted because um, great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Robbie, it, um, you played in the in the Kings Cup. Obviously, it was a defeat, but it was against uh, it was Altaouan, wasn't it? Uh, Taoui, yeah, they, Taoui. yeah, and and they are like playing really well, third in the league and all that. Is, was that a good was that a good uh, experience in terms of gauging, you know, the, the the sort of how good your team can be? Uh, I mean, it was a it was a real, real great test for us. I'm not sure there was a gauge in terms of. Um, Playing against other teams, but we know that we went toe to toe with one of the best leagues currently in the in the pro league, uh, and I was rightfully proud of the performance uh, that we put in. Um, I mean, we we gave everything. Um, I, I think, without sounding egotistically, I, I thought we should have won the game. In all fairness, uh, but look, that shows you sort of the level that we've got now. So we've got ourselves standards, and we need to try and sort of emulate those standards every single week. But in terms of um, gauging who we've played and who we've come up against, we, we've gone toe to toe with one of the, the, the very best teams currently in the Pro League, and and that is for, for us that is brilliant. Fantastic, Robbie. Just a quick word on. Uh, I know you've uh, you go back and forth, you go back home uh, quite a bit and all that. You've got uh, uh, the Fowler Academy. Uh, just a quick yeah. word on that, and uh, without pushing the point or anything, you know, is it is it something that you know at some point you might you know utilize, find out like a couple of good talents that might uh, play abroad, possibly? Yeah, look, I, th- I think, I mean, that's not something that we, we'd we sort of planned on doing with the kids, but it's like anywhere, you know, I, I mean, I'll bring my own club inside. If, if any of my players sort of want to develop and go and play in the best leagues, um, you know, we're all for that. And, and that's exactly what we do with the, uh, you know, the, the academy that I've got in the UK. Primarily, it is an educational-based facility uh, which is obviously the, the, the added bonus of giving the, the players, uh, boys and girls, a chance to go and maybe play semi-professional or professional. Uh, it's hard work. It, it really is. Um, but if they show the correct diet, desire and attitude, then you know the world is there for them. So, yeah, you know, there's, there's a chance for everyone to sort of go and develop and grow. And, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant, Robbie. Thank you so much. Robbie, you said about uh, aspiring and, 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 you know, going toe-to-toe with with the SBL and you'll be sitting down with, with Stevie for a coffee. Um, as I always do here, this is, I, I play devil's advocate. This is where I become the guests most hated presenter, but I'm going to ask you from what you've seen of the SBL so far, put you on the spot. Uh, have you got a shout for champions this season? Yeah, look, I've, I've been impressed with a few teams. I've, I've just mentioned to there, I think obviously because we were playing them in the, uh, in the Kings cup, obviously we've done a lot of work on them. And I think every game they played, I think I've probably seen them more than any other team in up there. And so I've been very, very impressed with the way uh, they've gone about their games this year. They've looked impressive. Uh, but look, you, you look at the big teams again, Alitiad and sort of Al Halal, who uh, have started off brilliantly again. And, and of course, I think Stephen's team have been have been very good. They had a great start. They had a little bit of a dip in between, but then they've started getting points again. So um, whether Stephen... Still there, aren't they? Of course, yeah. Well, Stephen's probably finding his feet a little bit as well. So, um, yeah, no, I think they've they've had an impressive start. Uh, but for me, I think you, you look at the likes of Al Alal, and I know it's not really it's a bit of a surprise for this, but they are probably the standout team with the players they've got. You know, the uh, the fans they've got, the, the facilities they've got, the stadium they've got, um, and you know, all all, all roads point to them. Uh, in all fairness. Brilliant. Uh, all roads point to Robbie Fowler being with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on, uh, Robbie. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can grab a little bit of time with you before the end of the season and, and hopefully catch up with, uh, with with your team. Thanks for being um, on Dowry. Okay. Ali, we've been saying how the big matches have not disappointed so far. Uh, we were hugely excited about Etifax's visit to Al-Akli. 
did we put the commentator's curse on it? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, finish nil nil. Um, <laughs> look, it's uh, <laughs> yeah. We, we were saying. Remember last week we were saying four three has become you know there's a, a result synonymous with the Saudi league. Yeah, this was nil nil. Um, a decent point for and uh, you know on the back of the nil nil for Etihad, of course, as well. You know. Mm. Look, a decent point for Etifak, for sure. You know, a, a battling performance from Gerard's team, which we've Clean come sheet. to expect. Clean sheet away from home. You know, we've come to expect this from Gerard and you know, and uh, and his team. Uh, so, so yeah, no four three here. Uh, look, in hindsight, this was probably expected. The two teams, you know, are separated by only one point um, going into the game. You know, and, and they're in they're in that you know group of teams just behind the top three. Uh, they mean I think they were sitting fourth and fifth last week. Now they're after this draw, they're fifth and sixth because Al Nasser leapfrogged both of them with their win, you know. So, so I think but, uh, neither team would be too disappointed. Uh, they, they might be disappointed they dropped a place, but uh, look, it was as you say, it was a, it was a battling performance from both, you know. Certainly for Etihad, I think they'll be very happy with that point. Uh, of course, as, as well, Khaled mentioned there was match day two in the AFC Champions League uh, incident round. Uh, for, for the Saudi teams, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, look, uh, you, everyone's heard by now, Monday night's uh, uh, match between Itihad and Sefahan over Iran was called off after the Saudi team uh, refused to play, refused to enter the pitch because of provocative political messages inside the stadium in Asfahan. Uh, it, it, look, it, it was it was surprise, we, you know, but... What I think has been good has been the reaction to it in the what followed has been quite measured, I think, all round. Uh, the AFC came out with a match statement uh, which said the match was cancelled due to unanticipated and unforeseen circumstances. But is, they did say, look, the safety of the players is paramount. You know, and if the players felt unsafe, fair enough, you know. Uh, the Saudi Football Federation, as you expect, supported it has decision. And even the, the Iranian foreign minister called yep. for the match to be rescheduled, said, look, our relations are good, you know, the, you know, politics should not be involved. So I think, you know, it is, it is almost almost a happy resolution for it. We'll wait and see when and if the match is, uh, is rescheduled. Uh, but that same night, Al Nasser took control of Gru- Group E with a 3-1 win over Istiklal of uh, Tajikistan. Ronaldo scoring once and Taliska scoring twice. He's been on great form. Uh, Taliska. Uh, and you know, this is after they trailed at halftime. So good comeback win. Six point out of six, you know, they got to be happy. Uh, Fayha, uh, sort of like sort of the lesser of the four of Saudi's four, uh, lesser known of, of Saudi's four teams in the Champions League. They beat Bakhtakhor of, uh, of Uzbekistan 2 0. First three points in Group A, so they're happy to be to get off the mark. Um, and then, you know, finally, last but not least, uh, Al Hilal beat Nasaji of Iran 3 0. Both teams had players sent off, and uh, finally there was a goal for Neymar. A smart left foot finish. <laughs> yes, we were all happy to see it, you know. I think he was yep. quite relieved. Uh, it was a good finish. Yeah, great finish. Like, uh, smart left foot finish uh, in the second half. They'd already taken the lead through your old uh, favorite, uh, Alexander Mitrovic, uh, Pete. Yep. Uh, he, he scored after 20 minutes, I think 18 or 20 minutes. Uh, and Saleh al Shahri scored late in stop time. You might remember, listeners might remember Saleh al Shahri. He's the guy who scored the equalizer against against Argentina in that famous game at the, at the World Cup, you know, before Al Dosri scored. Uh, so uh, Al Hilal are top of Group uh, D with four points uh, on goal difference. But yeah, I mean, uh, I, w- I, would, uh, I would suggest like themselves and uh, Al Nasser, and we'll wait to see what happens with the Tad, but themselves and Al Nasser are pretty strong positions at the moment. Okay, Ali, what can we look forward to in this week's round of SPL matches? Um, well, Al Nasser play Abha, uh, and we yeah. expect their form to continue. Like we say, like six wins on the trough. We are, I expect this to be seven. They, you know, they really are a treat to watch uh, right now. Cristiano Ronaldo's playing brilliantly. Uh, Taliska's playing well. M- Mane scoring as well. Uh, we expect that to rise up the table to continue. And look, if the top, if the top clubs slip up. Yeah, you know, you, uh, Al Nasser now are within one match. Incredibly, you know, they're they're only two points behind the top, so they're within one match of going uh, to. Uh, you know, uh, but, however, I do expect El Hilal to win this win this week as well. Uh, they are uh, away at Al uh and you would really expect them to win. We say like once they get their noses in, in front, you know, they they are a winning machine. Uh, look, the, the most intriguing game. Will be the Jeddah Derby between Ittihad and Al Ahli. We've mentioned Derby's that every week. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Mate. You know, and, like, and we mentioned last week we are big fans of Al Ahli's forward line yeah. of uh, Saint Maximin and uh, Firmino and Riyad Mahrez. Uh, so uh, you know, 
you know, both teams had lot shot blanks last week, you know, uh, Etihad and Al Ahli. So hopefully there'll be goals in this one. Um, maybe another 4 3, Peter, but uh, probably not. But, uh, you know, we are, uh, uh, th- this should be the game of the week. Think. Yeah, it should be. I mean, it's it's there. It stands out. It jumps out, and of course, it's our sports editor's choice. That means one thing. On the block, Ali. <laughs> uh, prediction. Yeah, I think. Uh, look, Etihad will be disappointed that uh, they dropped points last week and let slip off the lead. I think they'll come back strongly. Uh, you know, they're, they're they're very solid team. The champions. They're you know, very very. Uh, uh, they've been great this season. I think they'll come back strongly and, and win this one. Probably, probably like a, again another not uh, maybe another tight game. Uh, I expect Etihad to win. I'll go for two one. So it's a hat. Two one. Okay, that's the uh, sports editor's pick. Uh, listen, that's it for another episode of this week's Dowry. Whoever your team is, good luck to you at the weekend, and we will see you next weekend, of course, on our uh, Arab News podcast. Have a great weekend, and best of luck to your team. 